Okay, I saw a presentation by the makers of um, Backtrack on S-Tunnel and encrypting messages um, and sending them across the network. And in their presentation, they used a client, a mail client, that was not capable of secure, securely sending mail. And they wanted to send mail to a secure mail server using uh, port 995, let's say POP3, secure POP3. And so this mail server expects secure communications, but their mail client couldn't do it. So what they did was is configured S-Tunnel, right, to encrypt the communication, send it across the network, and then send it to the secure service. And I thought it was a great presentation, so I said, hey, let's, let's try to do this as a lab in the class. But in, when I, one of the things that intrigued me was that you could also um, encrypt any type of network communication. Um, so, for instance, you could encrypt unencrypted messages with S-Tunnel, so they're encrypted, send it across the network, and send it to another S-Tunnel um, program running in server mode, and it'll accept that secure communication and then forward it on to the service that wants it. So essentially what you could do is you could encrypt any network messages going to and from. And well, why would you want to do this? Well, let's say you wanted to, um, you were afraid that somebody was intercepting your messages and you wanted to make sure that they were secure and not readable, right? So you want to just as safety precaution to make sure that you have your information encrypted as it's being sent across the network regardless of the port or the service. Uh, let's say if you were a bad guy and you wanted to bypass an in intrusion prevention system or intrusion detection system, so you wanted to uh, hide essentially your malware or your bad programs or your information by encrypting it so that any type of um, detection scheme by the administration on that network would not be able to see what you're doing because you're sending encrypted traffic across the network. Now that's not always going to work, but you know, as a proof of concept, the idea is to encrypt the data that's being sent across the network so that it is um, unavailable to prying eyes. So if it's intercepted, it cannot be um, deciphered, right? So so there's two ways of doing that. So you could send it to a secure service or you could send it to a non-secure service and send it S-Tunnel to S-Tunnel running one in client mode and the other in servers mode. And that's what we're going to do in this lab. So in this lab, what we're going to do is we're going to have two clients. We're going to have client A, which is going to be Backtrack Linux, and client B, which will be a you know vulnerable, fairly vulnerable old system, XP Pro, right? Service Pack 2 will be client B right and what we're gonna do is we'll start by sending uh, netcat messages back and forth so we'll need to install netcat the program netcat on um, our backtrack machine which already comes installed so that's no problem and we're gonna need to install netcat on the uh, client B machine right and what we're gonna do is we'll have netcat connect on port 4489 to 127.0.0.1. S-Tunnel will accept the connection on port 4489 and then we'll connect on port 4488 and then it'll be sent across the network and client B will accept the connection at 4488 through S-Tunnel and then it'll connect through 4489 to um, the Netcat listener over here. So this will be a netcat connection and then this will be a netcat listener over here on 4489. And this is pretty much how I'm going to set it up to try to send messages, almost like a chat message back and forth from client A to client B, but it'll be encrypted by S-Tunnel. Okay? Um, and so we're going to need to install, we're going to need to install S-Tunnel on this XP Pro client B machine we're also going to need to install a few other things. Okay, so to get this to work, these are the things I needed to install on my Windows XP um, client. 
Um, now, once again, all these things I didn't need to install on the Backtrack machine, but on XP I did. First of all, since this is an old XP Pro client, Service Pack 2, I needed to update my Windows installer. Uh, Windows installer, and this is the version I needed because I couldn't even install some of these other packages without updating my Windows installer. Then I installed uh, Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 redistributable package x86, have to install that. Uh, Visual C++ 2008 redistributable package x86, so I installed both of those. Okay, when you download them, here they are right here. Uh, here's the Windows installer that I installed. Here is the x86 2010 version, and then this is the 2008 version. Now they have the same name when you download them, so I named this one with a different name so that uh, they would show up differently on my desktop. Uh, then I needed to install the Win32 version of OpenSSL, and you'll be seeing uh, how to do that in a minute. Uh, so uh, I open SSL for Windows right here, then uh, S Tunnel for Windows, um, S Tunnel 4.50 for Windows, and there's the installer here. And then also I downloaded Netcat, uh, Netcat Portable Edition, uh, the Windows Edition, um, and then I unzipped it, and and then this is the unzipped folder, and inside of the folder, you can see there's Netcat right here. Um, so, those are the things that you're going to need to install to get this to work on your XP machine. All right? Another thing, if you install these um, downloads in this order, when you get to installing S-Tunnel 4.5 for Windows, you'll get the benefit of having installed OpenSSL first, so S-Tunnel will prompt you for the information necessary and it'll create your certificate that you're going to need to run S-Tunnel. It'll help you, it'll essentially assist you in creating your self-signed certificate that you're going to need to run this program. Now, if you already installed S-Tunnel, and then you're installing, you're installing OpenSSL afterwards, this is the command that you could use to get that to work. So you could navigate, you'll need to navigate to um, the bin folder inside of the OpenSSL folder on your C drive. Okay, so I'll just show you that really quickly. On your C drive, here's my C drive, there's OpenSSL for Windows. And if you look inside of it, there's a bin folder, and there is the um, program, let's see here, OpenSSL.exe. So if you, in a command prompt, in a command prompt, navigate to this folder, and then you could type in this command here, and it will create a 2048-bit RSA key stunnel.pem file which you're going to need f to um, run S-Tunnel. So here's the website for um, S-Tunnel. It's at stunnel.org, and I clicked on the download links, and we're going to need to download S-Tunnel. So we'll just see, see here. All right, S-Tunnel 4.5 installer. All right, this looks like the one we want. And I'll just save it to the desktop for right now. We're also going to download um, at Microsoft.com download. You can see the link that I've put here. This is the Microsoft Visual C++ 2008 redistributable uh, package for x86 system here. So I'm going to start the download here and I'll save that also to the desktop. Just to be on the safe side I'm also going to download the 2010 redistributable package for x86. So let's see here Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 redistributable package. Alright and you can find these things by just doing a search on the internet and you can see here it's actually the same, it looks like it's the same exact uh, program, so that's interesting. And it says, do you want to replace it? And I'll say no, I'll say version 2010. 
Okay, here's the website where we can download OpenSSL for Windows. Um, you can see here's Shining Light Productions, um, SLP, slproweb.com forward slash products forward slash win32 openssl.html. And that's capital W and a capital O and a capital SSL. And there's the link right there. So when we get to this website, we're going to look for a version for Windows, which we're on the right page for that. And I'm just going to download the top version, the Win32 OpenSSL version 1.0.0 E Lite. And we'll just click on that and save that to the desktop. We'll start with installing the x86. I'm going to try to install the second one for 2010. So I'll run that. Windows installer version 3.1 or higher is required uh, to perform this installation. So we're going to need a higher version of Windows installer. So let's see here. Um, since this is an older version of Windows XP Pro and I haven't fully updated it because I use it for um, security testing purposes, I will have to download this Windows installer. So I've gone to Microsoft support here, Windows installer version 3.1 version 2. And we'll download that. And it might be that I need to run some updates on this system to allow for me to install the S tunnel and the open SSL. Okay. All right. So this is going to require a restart. So I'm going to restart Windows and then come back to this tutorial.